So, welcome to the... God damn it! Welcome to another episode of Cage in the Crib. Today is another championship edition. So I brought one of my championship belts. Today's guest will be Kenneth the Boss Cross. And... I'll be having a special co-host. If you smell what the rust is cooking. Kick it off. All right, we're here with our special guest, Kenny the Boss Cross, fighting for the super lightweight title at Lights Out Championship February 16th. What's up, boss? Good, man. What's up? How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. You know, just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> so, my first question is, you're fighting Corey Cuppy. He's been in the game for about, like, 10 years or something like that. Something ridiculous. You've only been fighting for yeah. about maybe three. So, do you think his experience might be a factor in your fight? Um, I'm thinking more quality or quantity years that I have in the sport compared to his. I'm not a, I, the only reason why I feel like he could be in the same cage is because of those 10 years. So, you know, he's got length and he's got 10 years. Simple as that. I got him. TC, that's all I need. We know you saw Corey's interview where he said all this stuff about you on our show last time. Do you have anything, yeah. anything that he said specifically that you want to address? I mean, you know, if you want to talk about a juice stuff, by the way, it would be the only thing I would like to comment on. And you gotta, you gotta realize that I went from high school wrestling, competing in the gym, working out, chasing honeys, you know, testosterone levels going through the roof, to being in a five-year relationship, to focusing everything on a girl, not not on myself, not on my body, not on my dreams. So when I flipped that around and I, you know, I decided to take up MMA and start fighting and started training. Well, my first, my first eight fights as an amateur that I went eight and zero, uh, I didn't train. I, I did a little bit of strength and conditioning on my own, pushing myself, which any athlete knows it's kind of hard to push yourself. So the result turned that I was fighting at 140s, 145. I was a little boy. I, I mean, if I could have held on to that weight, you know, who's going to stop me in the UFC? Nobody. Who's going to stop me at 155? Still probably nobody. But so just naturally training and, you know, dedicating my life to this this sport, I put on muscle. I look fucking good. You know what I'm saying? Fucking. He just, I mean, people say the same thing about Safe North. I mean, he can, if he can look like he looks and be in the UFC, I can look like I look. It's just, it's got gift genetics. And, uh, yeah. So you have spent, you spent your whole career with <laughs> you spent your whole career with Matt Frendo doing all your fights through what was KOP now Matt Frendo is Lights Out Championship you're still with them why haven't you branched out at all well I mean think of it I just fought for uh, Petey you know that's right you did fight for Petey so you branched yeah. out once well it was it was a cool experience yeah and I well I would I tried to fight that same guy for Brendo, but he backed out, you know, and then I uh, had to cut a little bit more weight and fight him again, reschedule it. That was a, that was a headache, but uh, yeah, so, I mean, I took a fight with PD, and it, it wasn't, it was like a four week, you know, camp. I just, we got things together last minute. I barely promoted it. I just wanted to get in there and get active and get another win in the win column for me. I, I knew I was going to run through Aaron Smith, you know, sure he's had over 70 fights or whatever. But I can just tell if I can beat somebody by the first time I lay eyes on them. And this is what's going to happen with Copy, too. I know I can run through him. Back to your question, though. It's like, I am loyal to Matt. I love Matt Friend. We throw on the best promotions. You know, we, we pack the stands with like five to 6,000 people. Me and Cody Stammons fought on that card a few times. It's, he, he, he gets good people to fight that the fans want to see. It's just exciting. And, he, you know, he really looks out for us fighters. He's almost been like a manager to me. You know, he's, he took me under his wing as long as, as long as, you know, I can, you know, give back a little bit of loyalty and 
say thank you, I feel like we have a pretty good relationship and it's going to continue to be like that on the way through. Both of us are on the up. So, so as, as we can see, you switched over to Michigan Top Team. I'm big on loyalty myself. So what I'm saying is it looked like they accepted you with open arms. I'll just give you an opportunity to talk about how great Michigan Top Team is and to endorse them. Yeah, um, well, there's, if you guys could have saw a little bit more of that last interview that I just shot, I talked about Michigan Top Team a lot, and I was really passionate about it. They're, they brought out a new side of me that's been hiding within for a while, and it's just compare my teammates to his teammates, compare my coaches to anybody's coaches, and that's why you have me, and that's what I'm, you know, they're creating this monster. You got to think there's going to be a little bit of animosity with me moving to Michigan's top team after I lost to one of their top guys, right? People are like, all right, Kenny wants to move to Michigan's top team. I, I don't know if that's a good move. I'm, I, I didn't think of it like that at all. I figured if someone can beat me, they have something that I don't, and I need that. So I made the transition. I got all my shit together, packed up from uh, Hastings, Michigan, Grand Rapids, whatever you want to say, and moved to Moved to Westland, you know, I'm about to move to uh, Chesterfield around here, but started training at Michigan Top Team, and it's almost been like a year and a half now, yeah, and I'm evolved to uh, a certain extent that people can't catch up, and I just keep improving that they're trying to catch up and they can't, that's why it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he's got 10 years in the sport or not, I'm, every day that I'm in there, it's like a week for these guys, just one of my days, so I'm surrounded by knowledge, I'm surrounded by killers, is he chilling in a hot tub with a UFC fighter? You know, what's he doing? Hanging out with his brother. So do you, do you think having like those high level guys is what got you better, faster? Like being with Cody Stamen, being with Aaron Kershank, Jason Fisher, all those top level guys. Do you think that's what helped you grow so much, so much quicker? Uh, 100% dedicate, you know, that me getting better besides wanting it for myself but being around people it's birds of a feather you know if, if you're training with the best you're going to be able to beat the best and I mean even like Jason Fisher I had no idea who he was I had no idea that actually he possessed the Jason Fisher he's been one of the leading causes there's there's the people that I expected to learn from at MTT and there's people I didn't expect to learn from either way I soak it all up and it's just it's overwhelming knowledge that if you just take a step back and listen, I'm not, like I might act cocky or whatever you may say, but in the gym, I'm completely humble. I'm a student, you know, with dedication and dreams of being great. So you gotta take in what you can. And I'm surrounded with people that can provide this kind of shit that I need. So yeah. So let's talk about your opponent in the matchup for a minute. Yeah. The advantages that he claims to have over you is, of course, experience. He says that he's a superior technician and he's clearly got a reach advantage of, over you. Why is he not ready for you? I'm, I'm just different than anybody he's ever fought before. If you guys watch me, I'm different than anybody who's ever fights. I'm super, I'm super athletic, very uh, unorthodox. You don't know what I'm throwing. I know what he's throwing a mile away. He just stands in a karate, you know, side sidekick and he, he blitzes in with certain punches one punch maybe two maybe three but they're all straight shots that i can easily avoid there's <clears throat> sorry i kind of forgot the question where we oh yeah okay advanced like why is he not ready for you he's why he's not ready for me he's not ready because i'm just a super athlete i'm, a, I'm surrounded by the best team best guys and, you know, I just, I want this dream. I want to uh, be the best in the world. So I'm not going to let some 30 year old that's never made it out of Michigan stop me. He's not ready for anything that I possess. Wrestling, striking, fucking striking, whatever, karate, point karate. I'm pretty good at point karate myself and I've never even heard of practice. I just watch people do, I just watch Jackie Chan and I'm fucking flipping around doing whatever I want. He's fucking, whatever, he hasn't got shit, he's just tall. And taller than anything, he, he, he doesn't like to get hit. I'm so explosive, I'll cover like four feet in a blink of an eye. I hit people before they expect it. I'm long for myself. Sure, I'm bumping up a weight class, but I'm beautiful food. I'm still long and strong. And once I take your back, it's, it's a wrap, all right? That's that's a big thing, and I can take his back all day. If he throws a kick, I'm going to blast double him. I don't even want to take it down to the ground, honestly. I'll tell you guys right now, I want to, I want to knock him out. I said it in the last interview. I'm going to KO him, I'm going to drop him. I'm going to 
but I could take him down on demand. Like I, Bobby Nash destroyed it, you know, just grinding him right through. Who do you think I have in the gym with me all the time? I have Taraz. He's six foot three. He's got striking like no. I have tall, long, strong guys. So it's not going to be anything that there's nothing that he has that I'm not planning for and preparing for. And I have a whole. I have a whole arsenal of shit that he has no idea I even possess. So he's in for a rude awakening. He thinks that I'm naive and that I don't know what's going on and I'm taking this fight because I'm doing this because I'm 24. I'm taking this fight because it's super easy and he's got a good record and he's tall. I'm going to look like a smaller man. People are going to, you know, pat me on my back for fighting a big guy when that shit don't even matter. You only got to pat my back because this is easy. This is the light work. If Floyd Mayweather was here, I'd be like, point to the easy work. So, we've seen you win a bunch of fights, but we've also seen you lose fights. And every time you win or lose, you are always classy at the end of the match. With that being said, let's say you go in here and you starch Corey and you put him out in nasty fashion. What happens? Um, I, dude, I came into this wanting to respect this guy because I know nothing about him. And he lives over by me. He's been the game for a long time. So, I see myself winning this fight shaking his hand and forgetting about him. Moving on with my night, bottle service. And what are you drinking? Uh, we'll probably go with a little Belvedere on the rocks. I'm just kidding, I chase everything. Like, <laughs> I gotta be, I'm a pretty I'm a, pussy when it comes to drinking. I'm a chaser guy too. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's an animal, animal. But he's anyways. an animal. He doesn't use a chaser, I gotta use a chaser. Yeah, I feel that. See, that's because we're dancers, I feel like. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah, <laughs> I too, <am> though. <laughs> <laughs> Not very well. He's more... Ah, uh, uh, whatever. He's more of a boy. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so I got another question for you. Fuck okay, one, shoot. marry one, kill one. Oh, God. Andrew Watson, myself, Fergie. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to kill. I would have to kill. Uh, I have to kill you, Justin. You gotta, you suck, man. You gotta go. Like, oh, you marry you. But Fer- Fergie's gonna catch the catch the cock, and Andrew's gonna get the ring. <laughs> yeah. 2019 is gonna be a good year, not for you. I'm sorry. Oh well. Hey, I, I'll, I'll just be a zombie from now on. I'll make hey, I'll make up for it after this fight. We can get a beer. All right, good shot, good shot. You can chase it if you want. All right. <laughs> so ne- next segment, I'm gonna give you some names. You just give me some feedback. All right. It could be one word. It could be a rant. It don't matter. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Cody Stain. Stud. Kenny Cross. Champ. Ooh, stud champ. Two time champ. <laughs> Mo Shatry. Oh, fucking animal. He's uh, I got a lot from Mo Shatry. I mean, his, his, that was the biggest fight I ever had. So, learning. I can just call him professor. I learned a lot from him. Matt Frendo. Dad. Josh Medley. Hot daughter. Alright, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Corey Cuppy. Dead meat. That's all I got for you. So basically, I just need you to cut a promo. Oh, so you guys, everybody knows me, knows the way I fight. I'm exciting as hell. Come out in fitness history. I'm going to be a... <laughs> oh, my. I had to take a second. But uh, I'm going to be the 165-pound lights-out champion of the world. And then I'm taking everyone's bitch. And then I'm gonna be the 155-pound champ. If I wanna make, if I wanna cut weight, then I'll be 155. And if I wanna go up and take the 180 strap, it's right there too, right? And, uh, hey, what's up, everybody? This is Kenneth Cross coming at you live from Cage in the Crib.